I'm not sure whether I should introduce myself as with most of you we have already worked together and we have met either online or personally. Um, so um, today I would like to present to you some of the results of um, informal patient payments in Central and Eastern European um, countries uh, that was my PhD research conducted at Maastricht University and uh, Cave Mahila Academy um, as a part of larger study funded by European Commission. And the overall project and... <coughs> Sorry, Tatiana. Uh, it would be interesting for, some, for the people who do not know you mm -hmm. to have a small introduction of yourself. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so, um, my name is uh, Tatiana Stepurka. I am an um, assistant uh, professor and head of master program uh, on healthcare management at School of Public Health uh, at Kiev Mahila Academy. Um, also, um, I have been a consultant of Ministry of Health uh, of Ukraine last year within the project of the World Bank. Um, and also I conduct some um, research related to out-of-pocket payments, um, like um, today the topic of uh, the research funded by uh, you said is related to out-of-pocket payments to on pharmaceuticals. Um, and also I am a member of our organizational committee on summer school on um, healthcare systems in transformation in uh, Eastern Europe. Uh, it's this year. It will be the second summer school for chief doctors, for um, heads of department as, at hospitals, as well as for policymakers. So this is a short introduction of myself, and I I will continue with the uh, presenting uh, results of the study. Is it fine? Do you hear me well? Yes, yes. Okay. So um, I will present uh, the some of the results of the project, um, which the overall project was already introduced by Milena Pavlova on the meeting uh, at Stockholm, and part of the results of, on formal patient payments um, and inability to pay for healthcare services. Uh, have been uh, already presented to you um, on the previous webinar by uh, Marjana Tamber. Um, within um, um, the last seminar, Marjana has underlined that informal payments are one of the types of um, overall patient payments, and uh, together with the formal and quasi-formal payments. Um, uh, overall, um, situations when patients uh, or their relative give chocolate and other goods as a token of gratitude, as well as envelope payments or cash contribution on the request of a healthcare provider, are jointly called informal patient payments. Um, it comprises all types of gifts, gratitude, tips, bribes, uh, which are not registered officially. Um, more about recent study uh, on uh, definitions on informal payments have been published uh, in uh, the Journal of Health Policy, and the author suggests uh, that one of the best definitions of uh, informal payments for healthcare are given by uh, Peter Gall, um, and uh, the definition is uh, um, referred to the following, um, that informal payments are defined as a direct contribution, which is made in addition to any contribution determined by uh, the terms of entitlement in cash or in kind by patients or other acting on their behalf, on behalf uh, to healthcare providers for services that uh, the patients are entitled to. Um, although uh, some of the actors involved in uh, giving, taking informal payments for healthcare 
services find um, finds gifts as necessary and useful to to access healthcare services its attributes like quality or attention of personal and um, but also they can simply express gratitude to providers still the need to eradicate uh, informal patient payments in healthcare is uh, undisputable because they create barriers uh, to healthcare services and inefficiency of using public funds. Um, as well as their presence um, decreased transparency and account accountability uh, in the healthcare service provision. Um, Overall, healthcare reforms conducted in Central and Eastern European countries have not resulted in the environment uh, purified from informal payments. Uh, so we study recent features of phenomenon in an updated context. Um, just several words about uh, the, the project uh, that uh, was in the frame for the research conducted. Um, we had six countries where we collected data. Uh, we collected both qualitative and quantitative data. Uh, for quali quantitative data, uh, there were two waves of data collection. The first one was in uh, 2010. Uh, and about 1,000 uh, respondents, uh, members of households in each country participated in the study and uh, we asked them about uh, the level, um, so the, the amount of um, total and uh, of total expenditure out of pocket for healthcare services and uh, share of informal payments. We asked them about um, satisfaction with access and quality with the services. We asked about whether they had to um, borrow some funds uh, to cover the expenditure. Um, we asked about attitudes toward informal payments and willingness to pay for healthcare services. As I'm sure, uh, socioeconomic uh, section was also um, in the end of the research instrument. We used face-to-face uh, -face interviews with the structured questionnaire and um, the interview took about 30 minutes to conduct. And the second wave of data collection was in uh, one year after the first one. And um, the second wave of data collection, uh, only three countries participated there. It was Bulgaria, Hungary, and Ukraine. And um, slightly less than 1,000 respondents, uh, in particular 800 uh, respondents per country participated in the study. And um, a bit later I will present the results of um, both waves of data collection. Um, the second wave of data collection was a bit shortened but extended with the section on informal payments, in particular um, last visit or last hospitalization experience. We asked about the purpose of informal payment, the initiator of the payment, um, and some other characteristics of the services considered. Um, so uh, today I would like to present uh, some um, results of the study on attitudes and experience with the actual payment. Um, types of the services which were the purpose of informal payment, patient awareness and which is compared with the share of informal payments and size of the payment, as well as to present uh, results of an ethnographic study on informal payments for childbirth in Kiev. <coughs> Overall, uh, the um, uh, Basic four basic dimensions mentioned in the literature um, are suggested to uh, explain the phenomenon of informal payments, and they are social cultural factors, economic and labor, 
factors, political and regulatory, they can be called as well as governance, and healthcare system in particular. Um, so we use these four dimensions. On, on the slide you may have a look only two of them, but in case you are interested in uh, more detailed description, it will be soon available in the book on informal practices. Um, I would like to introduce a bit this dimension and uh, to tell that um, to tell you that um, these um, dimensions they are rather interwoven, interwoven jointly leading to the existing a specific pattern of informal payments in the country. Uh, for example, um, the existence of uh, informal payments is uh, associated with the insufficient healthcare system funding and low physicians salaries. So we refer to healthcare system dimension in this case. And this offers an, an explanation why um, healthcare providers request informal payments and it emphasizes the provider's role in informal payment chain. Uh, however, insufficient healthcare, uh, healthcare system funding is largely a result of poor economic uh, circumstances which refer to economic and labor dimension. Um, low uh, earnings in the country imply uh, low general tax revenues and low social insurance contributions which in turn limit the resources available for public health care provision. Thus, uh, two dimensions, health care and economic and labor environment are interrelated and it might be difficult to distinguish their intertwined influence in practice. Similarly, socio-cultural uh, factors, uh, which include attitude and perceptions, um, indicate uh, the role of um, society, but also the role of the patient as a key element of the informal payment chain, uh, which refers to healthcare system. Thus, even when uh, the informal payment is requested, um, it is patient who um, makes the final decision to resort to informal transaction with provider or not. Um, in other words, uh, the patient is able to pour oil in the flame of the defective regulatory mechanism and the economic climate that leads to informal payment. Uh, but it is also the patient who initiates uh, <coughs> informal payment as a means to obtain the desired services. Um, such behavior is uh, labeled as a do-it-yourself approach. It's seen as a, an adapt, um, adaptive strategy of an individual who is unsatisfied with the government uh, services and is willing to pay um, and to apply different so-called illegal or extra-legal approaches to fulfill health care needs. Um, Therefore, um, uh, some theoretical uh, studies are focused on uh, uh, to explore and find deeper look on uh, individual motives at uh, informal payment. There are also um, uh, there is also important political and uh, regulatory environment uh, which are essential and. Uh, which refer to lack of uh, transparency and accountability, um, which facilitates the existence of corruption in many areas, not only between patients and physicians, but also in procurement and administration-physician relations. Um, the presence of informal practices and the debt of their roots also influence the pace and quality of the general reforms in the country. So the, the lack of consensus among policymakers uh, in uh, 
following common political values and in recognition of informal patient payments as a problem um, and the introduction of relevant measures to eradicate them is not is, is often noticed. Um, based on these uh, four dimensions and the ideas of the factors, we uh, try to uh, make a better visualization of uh, the country's profiles and uh, therefore we tried to select certain indicators for each dimension. Um, here on the slide you can have a look on the examples of the um, um, indicators uh, that were chosen for political and regulatory uh, dimension. Uh, so we took uh, from um, from the governance indicators such indexes as government effectiveness, control of corruption. Uh, we standardized standardized them, and in the end, we had average standardized score per dimension. Um, we did this for uh, each of four dimensions, and in the end, we had a better overview of the um, conduciveness of uh, the environments in the countries to informal payments in healthcare. So um, these letters, they mean economic and labor dimension, political and regulatory, social, cultural, and healthcare dimensions. And for example, in, in case of Romania, for the time of 2011-12, it, it, we can see from this picture that the biggest problem uh, was uh, related, uh, the biggest problem with informal payments were rooted in economic and labor uh, dimension, and that time Romania had quite um, a difficult economic situation. Uh, overall, the Poland has uh, the least conducive uh, environment to informal payments uh, that suggested that um, quite good indicators um, compared to other five countries. In uh, governance, in uh, economy, social, cultural, and healthcare. And uh, the most uh, conducive for um, informal payments uh, environment is seen in Ukraine. Um, it also can be seen from the um, area, size of the area of the shape. Um, I would like to move to the empirical, uh, to the results of empirical study, and um, perhaps if some of you have questions about some. Uh, background of um, of the on informal patient payments. I I'm ready to answer the questions related to this. Was everything clear? And should I move further? Sorry. Yeah. I think everything was clear. Okay. I think you can move on. Um, so I I would like to present some of the uh, results, and I will start from the overall um, um, utilization rate that was uh, discovered in our study. Um, so. Um, this data is from the first phase of data collect collection. Um, we have about the same rate of uh, of the countries uh, Bulgaria, Hungary, Lithuania, Poland um, who um, visited physician within the last year. So it means from summer 2009 to summer uh, 2010. Uh, while in Romania and Ukraine we observe slightly less people 
who consumed out of uh, outpatient services. Um, it's also interesting that um, in Ukraine, not only the share of healthcare users, but also the mean of number of visits um, is lower than in other countries. It's also interesting that for all countries, the data on utilization is comparable with the national and the data presented in uh, sources of uh, data sources of World Bank and WHO. But for Ukraine, uh, the statistics shows the same rate as in Poland, Lithuania, so it's about 75%, while in practice we observe um, only 57% uh, of um, the respondents who visited a uh, physician within last year. For hospitalization, we do not observe such, uh, such a huge differences in, in the previous data, and it's about 17-20 respondents who were hospitalized within uh, the last year. Uh, concerning the uh, Payments for physician services. Then last year, we observed that um, um, in uh, in Hungary and in Poland, uh, there is the highest rate of the respondents of uh, healthcare users who visited and who did not pay anything from their own pocket. Um, in Romania and in Ukraine, the share is about the same. And uh, perhaps, as you remember um, from the previous webinar, uh, there is only one country among these six countries where formal charges um, for healthcare services are introduced. It's Bulgaria. And uh, it suggested our data um, suggests that uh, it's about 64% um, of those who made uh, formal payments for outpatient services. Um, quite minor part paid for uh, services informally. It's 2%, uh, person, but also there is a share of those who made two types of payments. And um, the larger uh, share of um, informal payments are observed in uh, Romania and in Ukraine, where um, about 10% uh, made solely only informal payments, and uh, about one about fifth of the users they paid both formally. Perhaps it's it, they refer to quasi-formal payments because there are no um, national regulations on the introduction of um, um, formal payments in 2010. Um, in in Lithuania, um, uh, also the post-Soviet country, as well as uh, Ukraine, is uh, we observe. Uh, quite similar rate of informal payments, um, but um, lower share of the uh, double payments, so it's formal and informal. Uh, concerning hospitalization, which occurred within the last year preceding the data collection, uh, there is also uh, Poland uh, who uh, were patients um, were hospitalized, hospitalized but um, um, very uh, small share of them paid formally or informally. Um, the, the lowest um, uh, share of patients who did not make any payment is observed in uh, Romania and Ukraine. Uh, while um, the share of the uh, double payments, formal and informal payments, is the larger. Um, concerning the amounts of, uh, of the payments, um, there is also um, 
quite difficult situation for patients in Romania and in Ukraine where the amounts of uh, overall payments but also um, informal payments are quite high. Um, while in other countries like um, in, um, in Bulgaria, uh, the, um, the overall uh, expenditures from the pockets of uh, patients um, is comparable with Poland. So, um, as, a, as a result, it's a comparison of uh, the share and uh, level of informal payments. We observed that um, there are several groups of the countries. So, on the one hand, it's Poland and Bulgaria, where informal payments are, are not so spread, are less spread than in other countries, and amounts paid um, are rather um, moderate. Um, Romania and Ukraine on the opposite side with quite spread informal payments and quite high, especially for hospitalization payments. And uh, Hungary and Lithuania, the countries which are considered somewhere in the middle between these two groups of the countries. Um, for informal payments, the pattern of, uh, of the payment matters. Uh, because um, uh, for policy reasons, it's important um, for eradication of informal payments, it's important to um, distinguish payments which were solely uh, on the initiative of, of the payment of the payer and uh, the payments requested by medical staff. So, um, uh, with regard to last year experience of paying informally, in Poland and in Bulgaria, these payments are rarely observed, while in Romania and in Ukraine, they are widespread, as it was um, highlighted on the previous slides. Informal payments are more spread when they are requested or expected, like in Romania and in Ukraine. Uh, that also indicates on major financial troubles in healthcare system. Um, as we have already discussed uh, on the slide where the mentions of informal payments uh, were presented. However, in, uh, uh, in Hungary, um, the, lowest, the lowest percentage uh, of requested payments is noticed, um, together with quite high prevalence of making informal payments, suggesting patients' unsatisfaction with the existing quality of the services and lack of sanctions for this improper behavior. The extreme results were not found in case of Lithuania, and it seems to be an average case so um, it's used as a base for comparison for the further analysis and uh, with the attitudes. Um, so this is, um, these flags are presented uh, countries. Uh, we have Lithuania as a base for comparison with the attitudes. Um, in the research instrument, we had the, um, um, about eight questions uh, with regard to public opinions and attitudes towards informal payments. So the first group of the questions relate, was related to whether uh, respondents um, find their attitude positive, indifferent, or negative um, to either cash payments or in-kind payments. And we, when we compare all countries with Lithuania, we find that more positive attitudes are reported by Hungarians, while more negative attitudes are reported in uh, Romania, uh, Ukraine, Poland, and Bulgaria. We also asked um, respondents whether they um, think cash separately from in-kind uh, payments um, are corruption or gratitude. So there were four questions. And we did not find any difference 
with Lithuania in Romania and in Bulgaria, while in Poland uh, public uh, perceives uh, informal payments mostly as corruption, while in um, while in Hungary and in Ukraine uh, the public treats uh, informal payments mostly as gratitude. And uh, the last part of the uh, opinion questions were related to the roots of informal payments, uh, whether they are related to low funding of the system, and the second question was related to the need to eradicate uh, informal payments from healthcare system. And again, when we compare the uh, results from the countries uh, with the Lithuanian case, we see that uh, in Bulgaria and in Poland, uh, people are less inclined to resort to informal patient payments, while in uh, Ukraine, Romania, and in Hungary, people think that um, less percent of uh, respondents suggest that informal payments should be eradicated, and so as a summary, we assume that people are more inclined to uh, resort to informal patient payments. Um, apart from uh, public opinions, we also um, studied um, patients' beliefs uh, about informal payments. So this is called the kind of disposition of the person. Uh, which is surely related to public opinions and uh, previous behavior. Um, we had uh, five statements which I present on this slide, only four of them. Um, so um, we ask about whether the respondent uh, feels uncomfortable in case uh, um, he or she leaves the physician's office without payment, informal payment, um, about the um, abilities of the respondents to recognize the hint of position for informal payment, whether the user is empowered enough uh, to pay, um, to, to refuse the payment for health care um, in case it was requested or asked um, to pay informally by provider, and uh, whether there are some alternative options uh, for corrupted public services like private medical services. And it appears that um, in, uh, um, in Ukraine and in Romania, but in some cases in Hungary, um, people uh, show quite strong disposition toward making informal payments. So um, on the first statement, um, we have uh, negative answers. So uh, respondents say that they do not feel uncomfortable in about 70-77%, while in Ukraine and Romania, we observe for those who um, uh, provide negative response to this statement only in uh, half of the cases. Um, the ability of, um, of the respondents to recognize the hint is about on the level of 60%, uh, while in Poland uh, there is slightly less, and it's about 46% of those who would recognize the hint. Um, Consuming the um, ability of the respondents to refuse um, informal payment if asked, um, there are um, about um, 10 or 30 persons, which is less than in Romania and Ukraine. Um, so the, the, the healthcare users potential and actual they imagine the situation when they refuse the um, re request of payment of 
the, the request of, for the payment of provider. While in Ukraine and Romania, the share of, um, of those uh, respondents who can imagine this type of situation is, uh, is lower. And um, um, the private sector as uh, an alternative to public uh, service, which is uh, um, where informal payments are largely pre uh, uh, presented. Uh, so um, in Ukraine and in Hungary, uh, we observe more respondents who um, find uh, private alternatives possible. Um, this um, uh, this slide uh, refers to the second wave of data collection, and uh, apart from attitudes and perception, which are important in understanding of pattern of informal payments. Um, in order to design better policies for eradication, um, we asked in the second wave about the purpose of informal payment separately for last physician visit and last hospitalization, as well as uh, whether um, the, um, the payment was requested by staff or was initiated by the patient only. And um, we included in the analysis on only these last visits uh, which occurred from 2009 in order to avoid uh, recall bias. And it appears that um, we, in consistency with previous results which did not have a, a recall period, that uh, most of the payments uh, for outpatient services are initiated by, uh, by, by patients in, in Hungary, um, slightly less than in uh, hospitalization. While in, um, in uh, Bulgaria we observe more uh, informal payments, but still the, the number of those who make informal payments are lower than in other countries and uh, slightly more than half of the healthcare users uh, report that the informal payment was requested by the staff. Um, in the hospital sector, it's a bit uh, different uh, in Bulgaria, and most of the payments, uh, informal payments, are initiated by the patient. And um, in Ukraine, uh, a kind of consistency appear between out of outpatient and inpatient services. So about 60% of of the uh, payments are initiated by payment by patient, as it's reported uh, by re respondents, and um, about 40 percent of payments are, um, are requested by staff. Uh, concerning the main purpose of informal payment uh, for the last uh, visit, we observed that um, in Hungary and Ukraine, uh, pay, patients uh, pay for better attention, while better service and other purpose like access are still relevant. While in Bulgaria, more uh, respondents report payment for better service. And for hospitalizations, um, quite similar pattern of uh, the purposes of informal payments. So better attention and better service are very much appreciated. Um, mm, the, the knowledge of the size of official payment is also um, important uh, um, as the li theoretical literature suggests. Um, and we also asked uh, patients 
and to respondents whether um, they know the signs of official payment separately for a physician visit and for hospitalization. And um, the, the larger share of um, those who are aware of uh, the size of the payment is observed in Bulgaria where formal charges are introduced while um, the yellow part um, suggests um, always um, aware and uh, blue part is never aware. Uh, in most of the countries uh, this blue part is quite uh, large, but still there is um, quite substantial uh, share of the respondents in Bulgaria who are not aware of the size of official payment, even um, if uh, there are uh, some policies and clear regulations on the size of the formal payment. Uh, so we tried to combine these different features of informal payments like the reason of informal payment, the awareness of formal payment, and we tried to uh, find associations between these features, uh, these characteristics of informal payments in each country uh, from the second wave, it's Bulgaria, Hungary and Ukraine with the share and um, um, level, uh, the, the amount paid informally. And um, it appears as in inconsistency with the, the previous findings of uh, other studies and with the literature that significantly higher numbers of users report informal payments to specialists when compared to GP. And, um, higher share of informal payers um, um, of all types of last uh, hospitalizations uh, related to surgery, um, they um, they're also noticed um, uh, except for emergency childbirths. We also observe that uh, higher size of informal payments uh, are related to uh, the main reason of informal payment is reported by uh, respondents uh, with the better service for the last physician visit and last hospitalization. And um, um, informal payments are more expensive for patients' pockets in case of last hospitalization and um, when it was uh, requested, and uh, a bit lower amounts are given under better attention of physician reason. Um, we also uh, find quite interesting and but not consistent result in case of awareness of the size of formal fee. Uh, so those who are more aware of the size of the formal fee, they have a higher probability of paying informally um, and also make higher annual informal payments. But in contrast, the model of the last physician visit um, suggests that um, poor knowledge of the formal fee size is associated with higher amounts of informal payments for the last physician visit. So um, it appears that um, perhaps as we can interpret this data that uh, those perhaps people with better education and better uh, social skills they can uh, negotiate uh, with providers on the amount paid and in the end uh, they can uh, benefit more uh, I mean they will pay less for uh, for last physician visit. And uh, there is also part of the results related to um, uh, childbirth um, services in, in the countries. Um, uh, from the quantitative data from the second wave, 
we have noticed uh, that um, while substantial amounts are paid for childbirths, not only in Ukraine, but also in Hungary and in Bulgaria. Um, and therefore, it um, provided us a, a reason to explore the issue of informal payments for childbirths a bit deeper. Um, Although um, it was found from quantitative data that, for example, in Hungary and in Ukraine, half of the inpatients uh, who consumed uh, childbirth services, they um, paid for uh, the services related to pregnancy or delivery. And the median value of this payment was about uh, 7,100 euro in Hungary and about 200 uh, 63 euro in Ukraine. So, at that time, it was more than three monthly minimum wages in the country. Um, although the discussion of a childbirth plan between um, expecting parents and obstetric care provider is well known healthcare practice to reduce fear and pain in child delivery, um, it is applied in Ukraine in unusual form. As it was discovered in our ethnographic study conducted in 2009, where um, we had about 20 semi-structured interviews with consumers, providers, and key informants. And it, it appeared that uh, the practice of personal obstetrician um, uh, helps uh, to patients to uh, decrease this um, fear and pain, um, uh, psychological perhaps uh, pain uh, for like uh, in expecting them, being sure that uh, the service will be provided on um, the expected level. Um, but um, there is a quite important role of the personal obstetrician with whom uh, families, parents to be agree on informal payment um, is related to the informational support. Um, so um, overall we find two groups of the patients in, in Ukraine uh, and we call them individual patients, uh, those patients who have agreed with the obstetrician about the childbirth services and uh, related payments, and emergency room patients um, who do not have a personal obstetrician, though they may still pay a variety of services, uh, but they um, appear in, in the maternity home. Um, overall, the phenomenon of uh, personal obstetrician practice uh, to choose obstetrician in advance and to pay informally is also observed in Georgia and Thailand. Um, we could identify two push factors uh, which can lead um, to search for personal obstetrician in Ukraine. First of all, it's the need of 24-hour uh, access to reliable information and the need of psychological comfort during the childbirth. So this is not about practically clinical quality, which uh, can be hardly as, uh, assessed by a patient, but it's about uh, some service they mentioned, so it's reliable information better attention responsiveness, um, which can um, decrease the feeling of anxiety and uh, also can be seen as um, a tool to avoid some substandard care. And uh, it appears then when clear standards in healthcare provision are lacking, um, service quality can be artificially lowered by uh, physicians 
and therefore substandard care appears in the context of providers misusing their market position as well as government's failure to ensure the necessary financial and uh, regulatory framework in healthcare provision. Uh, um, we um, um, usually make decisions about possible interventions without consulting with the patient or her relatives and without mentioning the benefits uh, and risks of the inter interventions and the lack of information among patients leads to a perception of maternity care as high-risk care. Uh, with respect to these peculiarities, informal payments for obstetrician services cannot be classified as a gift or a donation. Uh, they have more uh, the character of a fee for service or payment for extra work um, character. Um, it's interesting that uh, obstetricians in our study were quite open about the redistribution uh, of, uh, of informal payments uh, received from the patients. Um, so um, they say that they use this money to buy pharmaceuticals, uh, which are lacking at maternity houses in Kiev. Um, also to maintain uh, physicians words like they sometimes invest in buying some uh, consumables like bulbs and uh, like cartridges to printers um, and um, these practices are not unique in Ukraine they are also reported in other studies in uh, from Georgia and Russia uh, so, as a result, informal payments, they um, not only add to the salary of obstetrician, but they also contribute to, um, they are part of the budget of hospital or facility. In fact, a uh, low salary of medical staff was indicated by both obstetricians and patients as a key reason of um, main cause of the existence of informal payments um, but um, there are quite different attitudes towards these payments. Um, provi uh, providers they quite positive about uh, the informal payments since they can um, cover gaps in the budget and can add quite a substantial part, especially in the uh, gynecology area, to the income. So, for example, when we asked physicians about uh, the level of salary they would expect to have officially and uh, without no informal payments, at that time of 2009, they mentioned the amount of um, 3,000 uh, euro per month, which is quite um, high for Ukrainian context and comparable with the incomes in uh, Western Europe. Uh, consumers, they um, have quite um, different uh, perceptions of the informal payments for childbirth. On the one hand, it's as it was uh, mentioned before, a um, strategy which uh, can give them uh, immediate, in, in a short term, term perspective, better uh, service quality, perceived uh, better service quality, uh, service um, characteristics, but um, in long term perspective, um, most of the consumers, they suggested that uh, they would like to have more transparency and um, less um, um, less financial uh, higher financial protection in the area of um, especially in the area of childbirth. Um, to summarize the overall findings, we um, we observed that uh, 
annual expenditures on informal payments um, for healthcare services uh, is about one minimal uh, monthly wage in Ukraine and Romania as it was in 2010. It's about uh, one uh, fourth in Poland and Bulgaria and half of one minimal monthly wage in Hungary and Lithuania. Um, overall, we um, observe that uh, patterns of informal patient payments are different among countries. Uh, like in Hungary, they are more mostly initiated by patient, and uh, more positive attitudes are um, noticed in, in Hungary. While in um, Romania and Ukraine, these payments are mostly um, requested. Higher share of payments are requested uh, by physicians, and uh, which makes them more expensive for users' pocket. Um, and such um, um, features of healthcare context as awareness, not only about the uh, formal size, but about the regulations and overall uh, education and uh, level of um, understanding and uh, awareness of the um, healthcare consumption um, features are important uh, in order to uh, when, when health uh, policy makers they aim at um, better access and quality of healthcare uh, services um, in order to um, what we have observed from the empirical results is that uh, some of the countries are already prepared for um, uh, eradication of informal payments, like uh, it was a case of Poland and uh, partly in Bulgaria, where uh, anti-corruption strategies, uh, not only in healthcare, but also in other areas, have been implemented. Um, and they were not only initiated by the uh, by the um, political elite, but also supported by public. Still, we observe quite um, a big um, a lack of support from healthcare providers for uh, any type of reforms uh, in healthcare. Therefore, um, it seems that. Uh, quite well designed policies, they should be um, added with the communicated uh, strategies and um, aimed separately for uh, providers, uh, consumers, and wider public in order to uh, make the track and path of healthcare reforms better. But still, in, in some countries like um, Lithuania, and even more in Ukraine, they uh, inherited from the Soviet Union um, uh, type of uh, policy making, which is not uh, um, based on the any type of evidences, but uh, depends on the uh, certain moods of the um, those who have power. It should be and sometimes we observe some uh, cases which um, uh, suggest that bottom-up initiatives like uh, civil society initiatives and uh, other um, uh, initiatives from patients and patients' organizations that they influence the um, policies in the sector, therefore uh, straightening the education and like critical mass uh, in the society is very important in order to have better health outcomes in the society. Um, just to mention that the, uh, the study, the uh, project was funded by European Commission and some details 
of, uh, of the funding is available on this slide. And for further reading, um, I uh, add some um, references on this slide. Um, if you have questions, I will be glad to answer them. Anya, thank you very much for your presentation. I don't know if Marzena would like to add something. Uh, yeah, I would like to ask Tanya some question because thank you, Tanya, for the presentation. It was it was very interesting, especially about the maternity care because this result I was I didn't know this result actually, although they were part of our project. So I have one question to you about this this result because uh, I'm wondering how it works in Ukraine with this maternity care because. In Poland, also the cost of delivery for parents is high, but people they can go to private sector. So they mm -hmm. go uh, and to the doctor who is working operating the private sector. They pay him. Actually, they pay him informally, and because the same doctor works in the public hospital, so they have easy access to public hospital where they deliver the child. So actually. Mm -hmm. I would say that we also pay, but we don't pay in for money, but it's actually, it's, it works very similar. So uh, mm -hmm. I'm wondering how it is in Ukraine with the private sector, whether they can access also uh, the public hospitals and public facilities through the private sector. And do you think that maybe uh, the, the situation when we have more developed private sector, can then help to uh, eliminate informal patient payment. Because if you look mm -hmm. at we have private sector, so we don't have informal patient payment in the area of the maternity care, or at least we have less. OK, thank you. I, I will try to um, answer uh, your questions. Um, in Ukraine, the, the private sector, even with the quite extensive uh, gynecological uh, services in contrast to others. Uh, in Kiev, it's more or less developed. So, like for time of uh, before childbirth, like seven months before childbirth, uh, there are some options to have services. But still, it's um, it's not very popular because private facilities they are not. Um, uh, they cannot provide a uh, patient with uh, formal sick leaves. So in order to have uh, this maternity leave, patients anyway have to refer to uh, public hospitals. And uh, like uh, the prices still paid informally within the, this period before childbirth are not comparable between these services. Like still in public um, uh, sector patients they can get free of charge uh, like blood uh, um, tests and so on but still ultrasound is something that uh, patients are going uh, to, to use these private services but um, in, if we compare so I do not refer now to some valid data but something that I have heard from um, um, physicians from uh, the private sector. So um, usually the amount paid for this seven months before childbirth services in public sector, surely it's not about insurance, but about out-of-pocket payments, uh, is about 3,000 uh, euro, maybe so like perhaps one of the best clinics in, in Kiev, uh, but the price is quite, was quite substantial. And uh, for childbirth, it's, um, it's not so easy to get it in private hospital because only one private hospital uh, has a license for, um, you know, to provide delivery services. And um, anyway, there are quite, um, uh, difficult procedures um, for 
uh, having childbirth and connecting uh, private and public services. But um, it appears that uh, in, in 2009, um, the price for the average or like standard price for childbirth in uh, public facility was about 500 euro. And at the same time, at private hospital, it was about, again, like 3,000 euro. It's the, the easiest uh, procedure. Um, but I can, it's, we're talking about Kiev, the capital of Ukraine, while in other regions, uh, Western and Eastern, and the private sector is underdeveloped. So it's suggested that it's only about 2% of of healthcare market, so it's just very uh, minor part, and I think the gynecological part is even lower, uh, taking into account quite developed dentist services. But in practice, I can assume that um, providing more um, responsibility or more um, space for development for private market the prices there can be uh, decreased for like typical procedures, but still um, I think for, as it's in Ukraine, um, perhaps the state will not um, make the uh, conditions for giving license for childbirth um, easier uh, for private facilities. And. Um, the second part of the question was related to developed uh, private sector, yeah? Yes, it was a little compared to, to eliminate or reduce mm -hmm. the patient pain. But we've seen within these three or four months after the crisis in Ukraine that uh, most of the, some of the private facilities, they uh, offered quite interesting um, uh, solutions for uh, not only high income groups but somewhere in middle income groups of the population in Ukraine and with this kind of uh, offers they um, uh, invite a quite substantial share of market <coughs> and um, I it was like a case that uh, suggested that people trust more and they would use public services uh, more often in, in case of um, lower prices they there. So in case private services would be more affordable to patients, they they would surely be in, uh, inclined to use their services. Okay, thank you. Uh, how did you manage to make the surveys like they were how did you make them nationally representative mm -hmm. um, it was the Maastricht University who coordinated the uh, study and uh, Milena Pavlova as a coordinator of the project um, uh, used the services of Gallup International so we had in our budget some funds for uh, subcontracting data collection and like one agency um, designed a data collection process for all six countries where they have partners and I would say it was quite a good experience of having quantitative data uh, for our study. Perhaps Marjana would agree or disagree with me but I think we have quite Reliable and quality. Yeah, the, uh, yeah the, the process of uh, selecting also the sample it was quite uh, mm -hmm. well designed. So this one is an issue. So we were we were sure that these samples were representative of the country. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you for your reply. Okay, so thank you very much for today. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, and have a nice week. Yeah, yeah you too. Yeah, thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.